In today's video, I'm going to talk about changing colors in Cubase. So I'm going to be talking about the main system colors, such as the background and whatnot. That's the general look and feel of Cubase. And I'm not going to be talking about the track colors or the event colors. Those can easily be changed by using the color tool. And you have this little drop down menu to change things to a different color. Alternatively, you have this select colors thing drop down menu by right clicking the top part here and then activating the color menu. I like this feature. It makes it easy. I don't have to switch tools. I can just select something, drop, uh, go to the drop down menu and change the color. So at the moment I have the default colors set in Cubase. If you want to change your colors you go into file and preferences and in this section if you have an older version of Cubase, there'll be a top menu section here that's called Colors, and you'll have a list of different color categories that you can go in and then select very specific areas that you want to change the color for. In Cubase 9.5, they introduced the color schemes, and now they have that under the User Interface section. So, in the new version, in this new color schemes thing, you have access to pretty much the same colors as before. You can go in and specify all these individual colors here for the general look and feel of Cubase. You can go into the track type colors and change those. Uh, the fader colors, there's a, all these different categories. So for a specific uh, fader, like let's say if for a MIDI channel, and I want to always have those look orange. I can go in here and select an orange hue and select whatever I want for a color for that. Uh, you, so you can get really nitty gritty, be very specific. I think in the um, in this section, in Mixed Console Rack Colors, I could be wrong, but this looks like you have even more color options than before. And then for the Mixed Console Channel Strip Colors, you have access to these ones as well. So first I'm going to describe how you would change the colors as per the old versions of Cubase and then I'll explain how the color scheme changes everything. So in the old versions of Cubase you would have to go to the specific thing. I don't think these had a hierarchy before. These were all independent. So what you would do is go into let's say change the project area background. You'd click on that. You would have the full hue uh, range, the full brightness range, saturation range, etc. You can change it from red to green to blue and then you could change the brightness and the saturation of that color. Now with the new version of Cubase this actually locks to a specific hue based on your color schemes selection. Then all you can do is change the brightness and the saturation and as you can see here, this is actually set as a hierarchy. So the project area background, this is like the main color. And if I change this, it's going to change the cycle region and the grid lines in a, in a similar way. So if I was to do really bright blue, you see these change as well. There's a type of hierarchy. So this is like a mini macro to these and the color schemes is like a macro to the custom colors in general. And what I mean by that is you see how I can only change it from blue and variations of this same hue of blue. In order to get a different color what I would have to do is change the color scheme. So there's these color scheme sort of preset things that change the color. This is more red, this is a little bit more blue, and this is more like a gross green. <laughs> uh, but you can go into the custom colors, select a specific hue. Let's say I wanted a very yellow looking cube base. Right now I'm in the yellow hue and if I select let's say a kind of off colored dark yellow, this is now my color scheme and then when I go into the custom colors 
I now have access to all that bright yellowness, which is actually that kind of looks a little bit cool, but it's way too bright and hard on the eyes. And you can go and select the project area color differently than the editor area. So this is not news if you've ever changed this the colors in Cubase before. There's also the ruler background. So this area, or sorry, right here, you have the ability to change that color. And then there's the inactive cycle. So if this was inactive, you could see it's gray. I could change that to a gross yellow. And if it's active, I can go and change it to a very specific color. So this one allows you to select an actual, a different hue. So you can change that. The reverse cycle again, you have access to the full hue settings and etc. etc. So basically, there's more hierarchy menu type system to the color scheme, or sorry, to the colors of what you can change. And that that might be like a limitation in in general, and I, I agree that it's a limitation, but it's a user-friendly limitation in in the general sense because let's say I wanted to change uh, let's go back to the default colors for this and this so like I had explained in, in my review for 9.5 is all you have to do now to set like a general color is just find a hue and for me I like like more of like a, a dark oak color I can go and set kind of like brownish this is a nice hue a nice saturation and brightness click OK and now all of Cubase has changed to that type of a color scheme and when I go into the custom colors you could see that has changed relative to the uh, relative to one another and I don't have to m go into each individual color and then totally modify I can if I want to um, but this just kind of locks down under like one color scheme so I mean, take it or leave it. You you might not like it because of the restrictions, um, but personally, I like it. It makes it just a lot simpler. So the other thing I wanted to mention is that if let's say you want a dark black, you would actually you actually can't do that in this uh, color schemes area. So you can select like close to black. It's not fully black. But if you wanted it completely black, you would have to set a specific hue. It wouldn't really matter, but you set a hue. And then you go into the custom colors area. And here you can go deep, dark black. Now the project area is completely black. I can go to the editor part, deep black. This one here, deep black. And I think they probably set so that these can't go fully black for, I don't know, maybe because they want you to have the um, contrast between the two sections. I have not yet figured out a way that you can do fully black. So let's say you're in my situation here where I've chosen a color I like. You can go ahead and store it. I have a preset for this and overwrite it. The other thing I wanted to mention is if you ever change a color that you don't like and you want to go back to the default each one of these pages seems to be different or sorry each one of these pages seems to be independent so I could set the defaults to here and it'll change the color schemes and the custom colors I think yeah I don't think that changed so I think these are li uh, linked but the track type defaults and these ones these are all separately and I'll, I'll just show you because for some reason these colors for me they just kind of changed to all gray and before and you probably would notice something weird is that these inserts these are all active inserts and they look gray and before the the normal way that they look is more of like a bluish color kind of like this and that's just because what I have to do to fix that is go into this section specifically, hit defaults, and now it's in its proper colors. For some reason, this changed to all gray, 
and I just had to go into this very specific section, hit default, then I can go hit, hit apply and store the preset. And then I would have to do that for all of these here because like I said, for whatever reason, they they changed. So now all the colors are going back. This section, the track type default colors, this you can see there's no actual color. It, this is like what you would signify for a transparent color. And that's because I have chosen in a very specific area for, let's try and find it, tracks somewhere. Under event display and tracks, I have set use random track color. And I like this because I can, I add the, the track and then it pops up to a, a random color. And sometimes it'll surprise me like, oh, that color looks cool. So I'll just keep it. <laughs> if not, then I can go and change the track color. But so that's why these are in that transparent mode. I can go ahead and change this to whatever I want. And then you'll see when I go to use random track, oh, actually, Let's say use default track color, use random. Oh, it's not doing it now. Okay. Well, I'm just going to cancel that. Go back into my colors and there it is. So I'm going to set these back to the default like I want them. Put this back to my preferred color scheme like so no a little bit more I like a so sure that looks good to me store to a preference and boom done so now in my mind like I said the new color schemes it's not perfect I mean there's I think they could use it definitely like an, a complete overhaul of all these menu systems and the preset storing and retrieval and etc and then and just maybe a, an updated color scheme like from the ground up they could use that but this already is a good fix it's a good compromise from taking what they had in the past and making it just easier to use in general so that is that I hope you like this video if you did leave a like and feel free to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.